small business, like many of us, I'm sure you're feeling it. Business is hard. And now more than ever, you need to have a plan to help your business not just survive, but thrive. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a profit and business strategist on a mission. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased in profitability and guides your growth. I want to share strategies that I've earned and learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. Wait, but before we get started, I have something I want to share with my listeners. I put together six easy, easy tips to implement that will help you improve your profitability right now. You can go pick those up on my website at trajectorybiz.com. That's T-R-A-J-E-C-T-O-R-Y-B-I-Z.com. So I'm really excited to have my guest on today. He's a dear friend of mine. We've been collaborating and connecting and sharing. I'm just loving Cade. So Cade Collins is the CEO, founder, and managing director of Synergy Collaborations, where he helps entrepreneurs and business owners to find their voice, grow their and grow their authority as they expand their business and personal brands presence online. After working for Fortune's most admired company in healthcare and a lifetime of preparation, we've all been there, Cade went full-time on his own company in the middle of a great shutdown of 2020 with the mission to find hope and to bring light for others. With nearly 10 years experience in sales and marketing, along with bachelors from the University of Oregon in sociology and general social sciences, he's a brainiac, Cade, Cade has a, a passion for creating collaborations between businesses and individuals. He currently lives in Salem, Oregon with his fiance, and I love her, where uh, they're enjoying traveling and documenting their content uh, for their travel blog and enjoying some of the best food spots. Cade, I love you. I'm so glad you're here on Profit with a Plan podcast. Welcome. Well, it's such a pl- privilege. It's a pleasure. I it, the, the energy and everything is right back toward you. So thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So we're here to talk today about um, really how to get your presence and everything out there. And I thought you're perfect for this because you share so much Mm -hmm. and you collaborate and I've been watching and reading all your content and it, Mm -hmm. it hits home. It's so personal. It's so engaging and it's really just, it's, it's an attractive thing. Mm -hmm. And I find that business owners have challenges being Mm -hmm. attractive to their ideal client. Right. So how did you come about all this and, yeah. and getting where you are? No, I, I so appreciate it. And, you know, it, it really is that journey. I, when I was introduced to social media, you know, in, in college about maybe nine years ago, I remember posting on Instagram and I was involved in a network marketing or online marketing, you know, gig in college. And some of the most successful people that I'd ever met, I'd, I'd surrounded myself and always been told by my mother, like you are the, the result of the five people you surround yourself the most. So I tried so hard to push myself and find people that are just like making changes. And this group in college stuck out and on, essentially they were online entrepreneurs. You know, they were using social media and, you know, they were making viral videos before I really understood what a viral video was, but they were doing it by providing this value, right? Like they were creating content that didn't just sell. So like the old age, right? Like people grab your attention so they can provide you a commercial. They were creating content by sharing the, in the life of an entrepreneur, right? Like they were these college kids that had essentially dropped out of college. And I, I, I finished college as Marcia shared in the intro, you know, I ended up sticking with it, but essentially they had this lifestyle that was unique and they were doing it by doing different things. And they got this to this level of scale where, you know, they had thousands of people joining their online or network marketing business, and they had never even met them, never even talked to them in person, but because of the videos they were putting out because of the different collaborations they were doing on Facebook, you know, they were pulling in this new audience. But what I found was they were pulling in their dream customer because they had cracked this code of sharing their authentic self. And, uh, and you can come me off at any time here, but I'm going to talk a little bit in this podcast about, you know, finding that dream customer and making sure that the person you're attracting in, you know, if you're going to be working specifically with that client or you're in a client service agency, like we are, 
you have to make sure that you're attracting the right people because, you know, we can always make more money. We can always find more opportunities for cash flow, but we don't get that time back. And if you're doing something that you're miserable or working with people that make you miserable, it might not, might not necessarily be the profit business strategy that we're looking for. Um, but it is definitely a strategy. I think a lot of us fall victim to, and I'm speaking from experience here. So, um, essentially how this all came round about, uh, I, you know, ended up working for, you know, a great, great company for about five years, but I, after I'd left that network marketing company, that's a different story. And I needed to save up. I needed to put some more capital aside so I can go, go into my business. And also I had student loan debt to pay off. So I, I got a job right. and I was doing sales in the Medi uh, Pacific Northwest. And, you know, I listened to someone, you know, Gary V. I'm going to continue to, to, to mention him because he had these philosophies and I had gotten to speak, hear him speak live when I was in college. And, he would talk about how we need to be publishing more and how we needed to document, not create. And when I saw his methodologies and saw how he was able to show up in a genuine manner, um, it was something that I just, I got hooked on. I started learning everything I could about it. And then, you know, we'll talk about some of the strategies we employ now, but um, that's really the origin story of how we got excited about, you know, showing up with such a volume of content and really just kind of giving people the behind the scenes of our entrepreneurial journey. I love that because it's not content. It's not something designed to sell. Like you're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, let me tell you the story about this because over here behind the curtain <laughs> is really the offer I'm trying to hit you with, mm -hmm. but it's documenting, right? It's saying, right. here's what I'm going through. And, and you may, you may be attracted to this because you may be going through this too. Absolutely. Right? That's so cool. So cool. We and so sorry, but and just to say that, like document to show that authentic self, right? And we see so much on social media, people aren't necessarily show, they're documenting only what they want people to see. And there's a difference when we say document, it's like, no, we're documenting the journey, man. Like the ups, the downs every day, you know, right before this podcast, I think I tweet, like, I'm so excited for this podcast interview. Like we are documenting the journey, making it, um, it, you know, just making it happen because we, we believe in this new realm of credibility that, you know, hasn't been tapped into, but it's definitely going to control attention in the future. At least that's my opinion. I think that's a great opinion. And I think the difference so authenticity is a big word out there everybody's mm -hmm. using but it's fake mm -hmm. you know like you said mm -hmm. they're they're trying to they're trying to only show you the, this side of the authenticity yep. not yes. the other side of the authenticity like curated authenticity let's call it that <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic tag that word curated <laughs> authenticity because that's fantastic because that's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. You're really not seeing the truth of, of what the struggles people go through and, and everything that they have and, and the attractiveness mm -hmm. and what attracts me to you besides, you know, just the, the friendship we have is Absolutely. the real story. Hey, it's your boy Cade, right? Yep. You start <laughs> off your emails and you come in and you have these things and it's like, Hey, this is what we're going through today. Or, Hey, mm -hmm. I had a rough time or, you know, yep. it's, it's great. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm loving it. So no, let me ask you a question. How do you get comfortable with opening up your kimono and mm -hmm. showing everybody all the potentially ugly or dirty sides of us? Totally. I, I think it's a great question. And it's that fear that anyone is really experiencing when they haven't started posting or publishing anything, you know, um, you know when you don't know, are people going to judge you or you think people will, you have those fears or are you incorrect in your thesis? Like all these things that we come to this conclusion, little do we know, not many people are going to see it or really, you know, is it going to have the spread that it might think that we could. So essentially the, the drawbacks that we build in our head are so much worse than the actual reality of just sucking it up and trying and posting it. But it comes from also, I did, uh, you know, I had this like philosophy going into, um, you know, my 28th year. So I, I met Jim Rohn virtually when I was in 2013. So I was in my twenties and he, he talked about measuring yourself and hitting goals. And to do that, you had to analyze where your progress was on a consistent basis. And I started to break down the goals of my life and my business into these different values is what we called them. We now call them principles, but it's health, wealth, happiness, spirit, personal development, community, and creation. And I started to just journal once a quarter, where am I today? Where do I want to go? 
And what do I need to do to make it that way? Here's the secret I think that most people miss out on. And if you're just like me, this is probably what you did. You find out where you are, you figure out where you want to go. You write down exactly what you need to do to make it that way. And you maybe do that for the first week, or you (laughs) maybe do that for three weeks in a row. There was no time where I was still doing the same thing I said I needed to do the quarter before, unless it was something that was just arbitrary or something I enjoy that didn't actually build me and bring me towards my goals. And this doesn't just apply in our lifestyle. It applies in our business, right? Where are we today with our leads? Where do we want to go with our leads? Where do we, what do we need to do to generate more leads, right? Like this is with sales, conversions, you know, retention all these things you can measure your 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 business this way we just started i just started measuring it my lifestyle because jim Rohn taught us this this methodology and the reason i'm saying that is i really was thinking about where do i want to be in five years 10 years 20 30 and i got that like i I was obsessed of like well jim Rohn taught me this i met that man after he died right he died in 2008 i watched his video in 2013 It's a four hour lecture that was free on YouTube and I'm listening to it like it's the gospel and it's absolutely changing my life, changing who I hang out with, changing the decisions I make in saving, helping me pay off debt, like absolutely revolutionizing and having a positive influence on my life. And that's where I come to this conclusion that positive influence. Well, I want to be an influencer right? That's where I'm thinking now. And that's where I stand a little different than most people, especially if you're under 20 on TikTok. An influencer in my realm is a lot different than the 20,000 followers on TikTok or Facebook. And you post your pictures and like, you're just, that, that's not what I mean by influence here. I mean, someone that is influencing, whether it's one person, multiple people, a community, a tribe, that's the influencer. So I figured I wanted to do that. And I saw how people were doing it. They're doing exactly what you're doing with your podcast, right? They're creating and having people on that can learn and share these journeys and bring these experiences. So you don't have to fall into the pitfalls that other people have done before you and also can inspire and move you forward with new strategies that you're bringing on with your own frameworks. And that's what's so exciting. I wanted to be able to do that same thing. And I really wasn't confident on camera. (laughs) I didn't anybody. I mean, gosh, that takes a while. That takes a it while. Takes, it takes a while. And that, to, to prove it, I, I, I did this thing with my fiance, you know, fast forward, right? June 1st, 2019, you know, measuring myself on health, wealth, happiness, spirit, personal development, community, and creation, and identifying where am I today? Where do I want to go? And what do I need to do to make it that way? And it was in this meeting that I had with my buddy, Andrew Weiss, that I unlocked that last piece that I talked about. I always figured out what I needed to do, but I wasn't consistently doing it after that. So I finally figured out how to do that. And it was this accountability that, you know, my friend wanted to dunk a basketball. So he needed to do these certain jumping exercises the whole summer. That was our conclusion. I wanted to lose weight. So I was like, hey, when I lost weight in the past, what did I do? I looked back in my phone because I documented, by the way, and I saw that I was running that summer. I ran and walked and did some pull-ups. So I was like, hey, you know what? I'll run every day for 100 days. If you do your jumping uh, exercises every day for 100 days, I'll put up $500 and you put up $500. If one of us doesn't do it, then the other person gets the money. So it brought in this this put your money where your mouth is mentality as a very competitive type of person too. But also we didn't realize it at the time, but we created a content strategy that actually documented what we were doing and actively working on when it came to our principles and our values. And when I went home and told my fiance about this, she's like, that's exciting. I want to do it too. So by long story short, we showed on social media, we had about five people join in the next few days. So $2,500 in the pot, but each one of us we're documenting for a hundred days that whole summer, what we were doing to improve ourselves in either health, wealth, happiness, or health, wealth, or spirit, you know, all these different categories. And when we finished that, we had all this content that we could repackage and repurpose, but also what we were showing was, Hey, we do this. We can prove we do it. And if you need that result, this is where I was. This is where you want to go. You can literally show them exactly how you did it. So now you ask, the reason I had to give all that background is you ask, like, how do you start to feel confident on camera? Well, one, you do it because I'll tell you, 
I did 200, 100 day challenge doing a, a, a video every day. Still didn't feel comfortable. I did. I told myself I had to do it for five minutes because I found myself cheating, doing like two minutes, you know, doing it really short. Still didn't Quick. feel comfortable <laughs> after 200. Wow. Told myself, all right, live stream every day for a hundred days. Still didn't. And then I told myself live stream and tell a story every day for a hundred days at that in that 400 days of challenges. But at the end of that 400 day, people said, dude, you're, you're so natural. Like, that's what you do. Like I was known as that guy. It was like, when I did my first challenge, I wasn't a runner sitting at Starbucks way overweight and feeling obese. But at the end I had posted every day for a hundred days, me running a mile, everyone knew thought and saw me as that. And also that I was someone that was disciplined and accountable. So not only did I elevate my credibility in these people's minds, all of a sudden I started to tap into some authority that I can now talk about running because I was showing that I was doing it every day. So lastly, what I just wanted to hit on is, you know, you're going to have these phases as you're going forward. So if you don't feel confident on camera, do it until you start to feel that because you're going to start to have that credibility in your own mind. Your own mindset's going to say, you know what? I do this. I have done it enough. I just need to get out of my head and start bringing it out there. And then as you start doing it, you're going to start to have authority in the space. And for me, the reason that's important, because I talked about what my end goal was being that influencer, having influence. So then we're thinking now credibility, which leads to authority, which is going to lead me to that end result of influence. And that's where doing things like this with someone like yourself on this, on this scale, on this platform, being able to share with your audience, like this is where we're, I'm telling you right now, like we're just documenting history every step of the way. So that's what we're excited to do is just essentially turn our lifestyle into our content strategy for our business. But, you know, use that as, you know, untapped potential, who knows where it's going to lead us. <laughs> fantastic wow you know I mean having a story like that that you're just documenting what you're doing whether you're um a a, a, a chiropractor creating a new a new system or you're helping a client improve yes. from zero uh, you know a pain of a 10 down mm -hmm. to a pain of two or three and you mm -hmm. document that that's power or so. you're you're you've got a a training program and you're showing them step by step by step you're not giving them necessarily the how that they Love can it. go home and do it themselves but you're showing them the results along the way yeah that's that's the documentation that's the big aha mm -hmm. i'm taking from this it's no longer that sales strategy of <laughs> curated comment content right? exactly it's, it's so authentic of the results that you're producing and i think it's i think it's fantastic and you said something so exciting that, you know, we're just starting to tap into because, you know, we were building this in our own heads for a long time. And then, um, you know, you build things in a bubble and that's where, you know, <laughs> investing in coaching and, you know, masterminds and surrounding yourself with other people that you start to open up that eggshell and you start to unravel the onion and really get the heart of what you're trying to do and serve. What you said, too, is like. If I can do that for myself, it's great. I know I've already know the benefit of me documenting. I know if I want to have a conversation about what I did, you know, the first day I joined my first high level mastermind, I literally have documented evidence of multiple things from that day. Right. And I can create and craft this whole story. That's much more compelling. So story selling is something that was really critical here, but what, what, what's beneficial is when you can start to have your customers feel that they can document and document their journey so they can mm. see that transformation. So they can, when you can help them document where they are before, you know, Marcia, the profit and business strategist came into their life where they were, you know, a week out, two weeks out, a month out, a quarter out, if they can document that and see how they're spending their time or how they're just, you know, their feelings are changing or their profit is changing. I think it's really exciting. There's so much untapped potential, but that's, that's where we want to go. Um, and helping people encourage them to have this courage to, to document and create these assets for themselves, but also for others to learn from. Um, sorry, I, I just keep going wow, on. Wow, boom. But, Boom, though. I never, yeah. ever thought, and this is the big <laughs> aha that we're going through here, is I never thought, I mean, I, I guess I never thought to ask my clients to document because whenever mm -hmm. you sell something, for whatever reason, you know, I'm in the information world and right. in the consulting and coaching side. So, you know, people were, are always afraid of, well, how did you get there? Or what did you do? Or I'm not going to get those same results. Mm -hmm. But if you have them document it and you show that 
the improvement. So just as an example, I was writing for, for one of my, um, one of my programs and I was writing a testimonial that I had experienced through my customer and, mm-hmm. and she had started her business and said, okay, our goal is, is 250 this year. And, you know, we only have nine months and she exceeded that to 375. And then she said, okay, my next year, it's going to be, since we did 375, I'm going to do five. It was in COVID and she actually produced 775 out of it. It was like, wow. 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 And so it was the journey Mm -hmm. that was so much more impactful than the end results. Mm -hmm. It's how she did it. And something as well that I think of if anyone wants to have a business that, you know, they, they do want an exit strategy down the road. They do want to sell out having that documented story of, you know, the origin or what you did, you know, that is so compelling. Those are media assets that that brand or that business could potentially have that really creates a compelling story on, you know, how this company has been, how it got its roots, what it did to start, how it's making changes, what, what significant impact it's had on its customers and its services with its services. So um, it's and an how does that strategy. look to a buyer? How does that look right. to a buyer to go, Hey, I've got a history or a journey of where this yeah. business has come from and how it got to this where I'm buying it and I can continue that story. Yeah. <laughs> no, no like and trust factor just goes through the roof. And that's where we, we want to help people be, be ahead of the trend. You know, it was Gary V talked about, you know, document don't create. And that's because there's such a throttle of when you do it to create your time is going to be so spent. Uh, so much time is going to be spent on creating that perfect asset or creating that perfect grouping of assets. You're behind the times by the time it gets out there, right? Like there's almost mm. so, so much of a life cycle of the demand with how quickly things are changing, how quickly new software <laughs> is popping up and new services are coming up and creating new solutions. So, you know, having that opportunity to document, don't create, but then using that as your content strategy, he's saying we need to be putting out a hundred pieces of content every single day. And wow. for anyone like myself, my gut just sinks into my stomach. Like I mean, my heart Mine just too. falls into my stomach and it's like, I, that's impossible. I can't do that. And that's the question. when I saw that presentation, he gave it in New Zealand in 2018 one, I had already listened to him on Snapchat. I listened to him on many different features. So I knew he was ahead of his times. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how ahead and how accurate he was. And now that you see the Facebook and all of these, you know, large behemoths that control all the attention are shifting towards creative and creators and getting collaborations and how much content they want people putting out, you know, it's because all of people's attention is spent on that one place. It's that, that glow worm, that phone, you know, that we all look at in our mobile devices where we spend our attention. So how can we dominate, you know, whether, whatever it is with your business, it's having that many assets and to get started, if you're not documenting, that could be 23 tweets. It could be 50, you know, Instagram posts every single day though, that is difficult, but that's where I task myself to, I want to get to a place where I can do a hundred. And just for myself, we're over 200 per week. You know, we're actually around 469 per week, but it's that progress. It's that process of, all right, what does it take? Because instead of saying that's impossible, I can't do it. I started saying, well, how can I do that? What can we do? What processes, what systems, what automations can we put in? So that's actually possible. And that's where documenting the way we do with our process has led us to be able to almost now hit that number. And that's why it's going to be exciting. I know when we do our our revisit of a podcast or, you know, have another one here, it's just going to be like, all right, we're hitting that 100 per day. Now, once, you know, what's 800 or what's 200 per day, you know, that's where we're really going because there's so much, so much content being put out there and there's such an amazing ability for the algorithm or the social networks to put the right content in front of the right people where you can build this contextual relationship, you know, for people that have been missing out on Facebook ads and Instagram ads for the last three years, you know, if you could go into a certain area, a certain country and contextually, you know, for example, the United States make an advertisement for every state and separate it that much, the, the engagement just highly outperforms. Hey, what's up, everyone join my social uh, influencer group or Hey, what's up, Oregon, join my social influencer group, right? Like it is just so much more contextual and the more contextual we can get with our content, the stronger we're going to build those relationships with the right people. Um, Mm. So I was circling. Okay. So I'm overwhelmed because I can't do a hundred posts a day, but you know, when you think about it, 
about it though. If you start, if you start, you know, and you're using different media outlets and contents yeah. and pieces and phone calls and text messages and emails and you know it's possible to hit that and and sure. hitting that up but i think that i think that for us not everyday people but us people yeah. that that aren't influencers the way yeah. that you want to be an influencer right. it's still important to put something out of value and yeah. document that on a regular basis and that regular basis could be one time a day to your mm -hmm. to your world because right. people for we're we're on a seven second memory yeah and and distracted with squirrels and shiny objects that are constantly pulling us away and if you can get in front of your ideal customer on a mm. regular basis meaning daily yeah you know several times a week then you're going to be in front of mind when they're ready to make that movement so good so good. instead of going oh what was that girl's name that i saw oh wait a minute oh there's another lady over here another guy over there and you lose you lose track all that work you spent to obtain a customer mm -hmm. is insane how expensive customers are to obtain and if you could drop that by being point of mind Mm -hmm. when they're ready to make their decision or influence or lead them to make that decision with you versus somebody else, mm -hmm. then it didn't cost you as much. Right. Right. And you're building this, this relationship that, you know, it, it's not just that one off sale. You're, you're, you're creating that customer for life, right? Like mm -hmm. how can you um, build that no like, and trust factor at scale for a long period of time? And that's where, you know, I love that you said like for, for people that are normal, I'm not saying people need to publish 100 di times per normal. day. No, I tried not to. <laughs> for people not crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but essentially it's, you know, that it, it's for our goal and we have a very specific goal in mind, right? So like our clientele or our business is about that personal brand and that influencer status, but that's not necessarily what's true for everyone's business. But just knowing that there's people that are publishing 100 times per day. And some of our listeners, cause I was there probably haven't published published 100 times this year, that should make you a little nervous and sick that your competitor could potentially be creating that much more a stronger of a relationship because they're putting so much more content out there. So just getting started is the key there, right? Okay. Don't worry if it's one piece of content. If you haven't published at all this year, get a content piece of content out there. Challenge yourself to do it the next day. Challenge yourself to maybe just do it the next week, whatever it is, but just get started. That would be my number one thing that I just want our audience to say, just get started, like start putting yes. it out there, something, but also in the way of value. Um, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent start giving value. Right. And, but also value can be time stamping who you are at that point in time and what you think you're here to serve. And just having a little, a piece like talking in a, a quick uh, Snapchat video or Instagram story, or even just putting a video that you take on your camera roll and post it to Instagram or Facebook saying, this is who I am. This is what I do. And this is who I want to serve next, right? Like bring this out there so you can start and then when you get started, you're going to start to find the ways and it's going to take time, right? I think that's what's so critical unless you want until you get to the level where you can hire a team like Synergy to, 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 to come out and manage this all for you. You know, you're going to need to learn how to do a lot of this yourself. And that's why reducing the pressure that it always has to be some pristine curated authentic piece of content Perfect. versus showing up is most important first and then also pro providing value on the back end um while my number one focus is just making sure that you're thinking about who you're showing up for and it sometimes i think we always think about our customer but also remember show up for yourself too like yes. you know you you really want to show up for yourself you really want to show up and attract that right person so what i'm saying there is don't be inauthentic. Don't say the things that are just going to bring the right people in your business, knowing that you're not actually wanting to work with them or maybe reconsider what you're doing. Um, because when you have, when you have the opportunity of time, you know, let's use it to make that positive influence. That's, that's my number one goal for people. Like <laughs> it a lot. And there's so many opportunities. You know, if you think about, if you think about watching TV, I don't know who watches yeah. much TV anymore with, with all the streaming, but there's the same commercial that hits you four times in an hour. And then you yep. go to the next show and then it's another commercial and then that one pops up again. And, and it's about repetition. 
And yes. I think that's the piece and you have to just get started. So this has been a real great lesson, Cade. This has been helpful. And I know many people are fearful of, of mm. putting out content, but just be yourself and document what you're doing. So Fantastic. Good. Love so it. Good. So nice. Cade, where can listeners find out more about you? Yeah, no, I'd love to connect. Um, you know, they can, you know, we put together a little worksheet for anyone as well, wants to grow their influence, their credibility and authority. So www.synergycollab.com forward slash worksheet. Um, but then Instagram, it's K-A-I-D Collins uh, and our YouTube channel, Cade, K-A-I-D dot TV. Um, I really, really appreciate all the time. It's been an absolute privilege. And again, I just want to encourage people get started. And if you're started, get start scaling and showing up more authentic. That, that's the key. Uh, and not curated authentic. Yes. Real, not curated authenticity. Authentic. That's going to be a big one. And I love it. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I only charge you 20%. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Love it. All right, listeners, thank you for listening today. I hope you found an idea or two or five or six to put into your business that will help you be more profitable. And that involves being and creating and putting out that authentic content. So now more than ever, it's important to build your own profit plan. So don't forget to pick up my six tips that will help you provide uh, increased profitability right now. Go to my website, trajectorybiz.com. That's B-I-Z. Kate and I would love to hear your questions or feedback, and please subscribe and comment on today's show. Uh, as always, you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players, and we're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks, Kate.